Good day! So today, we'll talk about the properties of the definite integral. Now, in the learning guides, may naka-sequence doon na sampung properties. I'll just follow that same sequence and the same ordering ng properties. So, let's start. The first property states that if the definite integral from a to b ng f of x, if that exists, then the definite integral from a to b of f of x, so it's the same thing, is equal to the negative of the definite integral from b to a of f of x. So sinasabi niya, pag sinwitch ko yung a and b, yung limits of integration, magiging negative yung value ng definite integral. So bakit totoo to? Balikan natin. Ang definite integral from a to b of f of x, this is equal to the limit of the Riemann sum or the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x. Ang important dito, ano yung delta x sa expression na to? Ang delta x sa kanya ay b minus a over n. If we take a look naman at the definite integral from b to a of the same function, so pareho lang, it's the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x. But ano na yung delta x dito? Ang delta x dito will be a minus b over n, which is the negative of b minus a over n. So dun sa delta x na part, tayo magkakaroon ng switching ng signs. Kaya yung definite integral from a to b will be the negative of the definite integral from b to a. Or switching the limits of integration will negate your definite integral. Let's move on sa second property. So the second property states that if f of a exists, then the definite integral from a to a of f of x dx will just be equal to zero. So yung limits of integration natin equal sila. So you're just essentially, if this is our function, yung red, that's our f of x. If you're looking for the definite integral from a to a, then you're looking for the area of that region, yung line segment na yan, from the x-axis papunta dun sa function where x equal to a. And we know that, you know, points have no, have no measurements and a line has no second dimension and lalo na a line segment. So the area of this line segment is zero. So the definite integral from a to a of any function as long as defined yung function natin sa f of a, that will also be equal to zero. Kasi nga, yung area nung line segment na yan ay zero. Let's move on to the third property. Now, the third property states that uh, the definite integral from a to b of a constant c is equal to c times b minus a. Ano ba yung function na y equals c or f of x equals c? Diba? That's just a horizontal line. And if we want to find the definite integral of that function from, b, from a to b, then it's just this region, this shaded region. It's just a rectangle, di ba? Na ang height niya ay C at ang base niya ay B minus A. So, consistent siya. Now, if our C is negative, then that means yung C will be below the x-axis. It's still also a rectangle, but ngayon yung height niya, yung height na gagamitin natin, will be a negative value. It's still also equal to C times B minus A, but like we said kanina, the definite integral can be negative. Then for this case, the definite integral is also negative. Now let's move on to the fourth property. The fourth property states that the definite integral from a to b of a constant times a function is equal to that constant times the definite integral from a to b of f of x. Pwede daw natin ilabas yung constant dun sa definite integral. Or pwede natin siyang ilabas dun sa integral, sa integral symbol. So why is this true? Well, the definite integral from a to b of c times f of x is equal to the limit of the Riemann sum na naman. So it's the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation of c times f of x times delta x. f of x i dapat yan. Sorry about that. Now, yung constant na yan, pwede natin siyang ilabas sa summation. Kasi constant lang siya. It's just a common factor. What we know about limits is pwede rin natin ilabas sa limits yung mga constants natin. So by taking out the constant bit by bit, and ano yung matitira sa atin dun sa right side ng expression? It's the limit as n approaches infinity ng summation from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x. And that's exactly the definite integral from a to b of f of x. So that proves the property. Let's move on to our fifth 
Actually, this is the fifth and sixth, no? Because in the learning guides, the fifth is the sum, the sixth is the difference. They're essentially the same, so I'll just discuss the first case, the sum. So, bahala na ka yung makita na consistent naman if we take the difference. So, this property states that the definite integral from a to b of the sum of two functions, f of x plus g of x, although ginamit ko ng plus minus, is equal to the definite integral from a to b of f of x plus the definite integral from a to b of g of x or minus, whichever the case may be. So, ang sinasabi nito is yung integration, the process of definite integration, pwede natin siyang i-distribute to terms sa sums and differences if that will be more convenient for us pag sinosolve siya. So, bakit ito totoo? So, let's take a look at two functions. On the left, we have f of x. On the right, we have g of x in purple. And if we add them, you should get something like this. So, imagine yung f of x parang hinila natin yung corners niya pataas. Kaya ganyan yung itsura niya. Kasi yung g of x, inaangat niya yung magkabilang dulo eh. Tapos sort of konti lang yung pagangat niya sa gitna. Let's take a look at the intervals from a to b. Now, the definite integral from a to b of f of x will be approximated by these rectangles. So, nilagay ko din itong rectangles na to dun sa f plus g na function sa gitna. The definite integral from a to b of g will be approximated by yung rectangles na nandito. Ito. Yan, yan. Oo. So, what I want you to do, para lang sure tayo, is to pause this video and sort of compare that the heights of these, oops, hindi ko na makita, okay. That the heights of these rectangles, they will correspond dun sa rectangles na pinlat natin dun sa middle function. Pero syempre, na-shift na sila. Kasi nakapatong sila dun sa blue rectangles, eh. And they should, they should correspond. Like, the first rectangle should have the same dimensions as the first rectangle dito sa g of x. Then, if we take the... Definite integral, pag ginawa natin infinite yung n, magsusmoothen siya. And the area ngayon in blue dun sa f of x, yung definite integral niya, equal din siya dun sa area in blue sa f plus g. And the area in purple, this is actually the more interesting part, kasi hindi niya ka-shape yung nasa gitna na function. That should be equal in area dun sa purple region dun sa gitna. Which dapat nakita natin nung andun pa lang siya sa approximating rectangles na, na stage. So, the definite integral of the sum or difference is equal to the sum or difference of their definite integrals. So, I like this, no? I sort of had fun animating this kasi mas, mas madami siyang colors and figures. Anyway, sorry. Let's move on to the next property. Our seventh property states that the definite integral from A to C of f of x plus the definite integral from C to B of f of x so, notice yung upper bound ng integration ng unang term ay nagko-correspond dun sa lower bound of integration ng second term. So, A to C, C to B. Equal daw to sa pagkuha mo ng definite integral from A to B derecho. So, again, definite integral from A to C plus the definite integral from C to B is equal to the definite integral from A to B. Notice that hindi natin sinabi kung nasan si C in relation to A and B. That's because it doesn't matter. So let us illustrate. So here I have a function f of x. Meron na kong bounds na a to b. Let's put c sa gitna. So we could see here that the definite integral from a to c plus the definite integral from c to b. Then that's just really no the definite integral from a to b. So medyo no brainer tong part na to. But what if c is not between a and b? Tignan natin. What if C is less than A? So, unahin ko dito is yung definite integral from C to B. So, a definite integral from C to B will be illustrated by this uh, blue area. And the definite integral from A to C. So, A to C. Pero yung C na una sa... Mas maliit yung C. Na una siya sa A. Dun sa interval natin. So, if we take the definite integral from A to C, this will be the negative of the definite integral from, from C to A. Applying the first property na nakita natin. So, dapat sana from left, ah, sorry, from right to left yung pag-animate, pero hindi ko siya magawa. So, I'll just animate from C to A, but I will use a red color to represent na negative siya. So, essentially, 
yung definite integral natin from C to B, i-add natin yung negative na definite integral from A to C. So, babalik tayo dun sa definite integral from A to B. So, ganun pa rin. Kahit mas maliit yung C sa A, nasa labas siya nung interval natin. Now, kung mas malaki naman siya sa B, andun siya sa right side, let's say. Ah, andyan siya. If we take the definite integral from A to C, we will get this area. But if we take the definite integral from C to B, pero C nasa mas malaki siya kay B. So, paano ulit yun? That will be uh, B minus C over N. So, magiging negative na naman yung delta X natin. Yung definite integral from C to B will be negative. C to B dapat. Although yung shading ko pag ganun, no? Kaso red ginamit ko. Kasi nga, hindi ko ma-animate na from right to left. So, sorry about that. But that will be negative. So, we'll remove that region from the definite integral of A to C and you'll go back sa definite integral from A to B. So, our point here is that it doesn't matter where C is. Pero kung pinagitna mo siya sa integration mo, A to C plus C to B, then that's just really the, the definite integral from A to B. So, let's move on to the eighth property, but I'll just use yung same na graph. The eighth property in the LG states that if f of x is greater than 0 for all values of x between a and b, then the definite integral from a to b of f of x will also be greater than or equal to 0. I think dapat if f of x is greater than or equal to 0, yung first condition dito. So, sorry about that. I'll try to edit it sa post-production. So, so, this should be easy to see, no? Na kung yung buong function natin, yung buong boundary ay nasa taas ng x-axis, edi yung definite integral, yung region na form niya with the x-axis for any bounds na a and b, basta nasa taas siya, it'll always be positive. So, we're getting area, it's always above the x-axis, then the definite integral is always positive. Let's move on to our ninth property. So, the ninth property states that if f of x is greater than or equal to g of x for all values of x in the between the bounds no in the interval a to b then the definite integral from a to b of f of x will be greater than or equal to the definite integral from a to b of g of x again this is easy to visualize let's have two functions so f of x and let's have g of x such that si g of x mas mababa yung values niya for all x values between a and b. So, ito yung visual niya. So, it only makes sense, no, that the definite integral from a to b ni f, yung area na nare-represent ng red na yan, ay mas malaki dun sa area na nare-represent ng blue, which is yung definite integral from a to b ni g of x. So, maybe we're not talking of area talaga na mas malaki kasi if it's below the x-axis, mas mababa yung g sa f. Malamang mas malaki yung area niya, which only would mean na mas negative siya. So, totoo pa din yung, ano natin, yung property natin. And let's move on to the last property. The tenth property states that if our function f of x is between small m na constant and big M na constant. So, formally, if m is less than or equal kay f of x, which in turn is less than or equal sa capital M, for all x values between a and b, then... The definite integral from a to b of f of x is between small m times b minus a and big M or capital M times b minus a. So, pwede natin siyang i-visualize as an application of the ninth property where we have two constants, lowercase m and capital M. Let's just call them small m and big M. And between the interval a to b, yung function natin, lahat ng values niya ay nasa gitna ni capital M at ni small m. So like this one. So ano ba yung capital M times B minus A? That is the area of this region. Ano ba yung definite integral from A to B ni f of x? It's this region. And ano ba yung small m times B minus A? It's this blue region. And we can see na in this case, since lahat sila above the x-axis, so we could just, you know, talk of area, Yung area nung first region, mas malaki talaga siya dun sa area of the region bounded by our function, which in turn is mas malaki dun sa area na bounded nung lowercase m na region. If we are below the x-axis, then that would mean 
na mas maliit yung region ni capital M kasi mas malaki siya sa lowercase m kasi mas negative si lowercase m so mag-hold pa din yung yung comparisons na ito kasi kahit mas malaki yung area ni lowercase m na region from A to B mas negative naman siya so those are the 10 properties for definite integrals that were discussed in the learning guides and that we are covering for this quarter will be definitely using these properties in a lot of our future uh, exercises and problems involving definite integrals. So I'll see you dun sa next video where we tackle more examples at salamat sa pakikinig.